welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all well. So in this video we are going to be reviewing Black Panther which is just one hell of a movie. You know, the world of Wakanda, the constant conflict between what's right and wrong, the responsibility of being a king, and just the cultural significance that this movie represents are just all reasons for why it's super iconic. I do personally feel like it's a little bit overhyped. And you know, it's funny because going into this movie I was just expecting it to be this absolutely perfect masterpiece and it is really really good, don't get me wrong, but I just feel like the hype kind of overdid it a little bit. And I also have a little bit of an issue with the fact that anyone who dares say is even like an ounce of negativity about this film is just hounded upon. And I just personally have a bit of an issue with that because I, I'm a big believer of freedom of speech and obviously being a critic I kind of like the fact that people can have their different opinions and I think that's a really really good thing. And I just think it's really ironic because, you know, Black Panther as a film is all about, you know, having different, different opinions and kind of exploring that. So, you know, I just think that people who have different opinions, it's, it's absolutely fine to do that. But, you know, let's put that to the side and now let's review this awesome movie. So the movie picks up after the events of Captain America's Civil War with T'Challa's character being pronounced King of Wakanda. Wakanda is a secret part of Africa that houses vibranium a super powerful metal that can be used to create amazing technology. Both of these things have been kind of main staples within the Marvel comic book world. So you know the world of Wakanda has been something that you know comic book readers have seen in comics and seen kind of artists represent but kind of seeing it on the big screen was just absolutely incredible and similarly vibranium is such a massive part of kind of the whole Marvel world and Marvel lure and all of that sort of stuff so to kind of see it on the big screen was really really cool and to kind of have it explained in a way that you know everyone can understand is really really cool as well. I don't want to give away too many spoilers about the actual story but effectively the main conflict is between T'Challa's character and Michael B. Jordan's character and they have very different opinions in terms of what they should be doing with Vibranium and how they should be supporting the people of Wakanda. So on the one hand it's about you know keeping everyone in Wakanda safe and kind of keeping the world of Wakanda secret from from the rest of the world because they don't want to kind of enter into wars or kind of have battled over vibranium or kind of use it to destroy the world or anything else like that whereas the other side of the conflict is to kind of use vibranium to kind of give power to the oppressed and to flip the battle between who's kind of the leaders and who are being oppressed at the moment so that's kind of the conflict of the film and kind of the foundation of the movie. The characters and actors in this movie really do make it what it is. It's a really heart-driven movie at its core that's about, you know, family, leadership, kind of the battle between doing what's right and wrong. And the cast really are exceptional in terms of how they bring this to life. You have, you know, Academy Award winner Lupita Nyong'o, you have Martin Freeman, and then you obviously have the two main characters um, played by Chadwick Boseman and Martin B. Jordan. So, you know, Chadwick Boseman's character, T'Challa slash Black Panther is back from Captain America Civil War and he plays him really really well. He plays, you know, kind of like the heroic protagonist really really well. I would say his performance is a little bit one-dimensional and I would have kind of wanted to see a bit more depth. But, you know, the material that he was given, he played it really really well. Michael B. Jordan absolutely kills it. You can tell that he really studied this character really really well and he kind of brings him to life in, in just an exceptional way. You're kind of you're with his character throughout from start to finish and you really understand you know, his motivations, kind of why he's doing what he's doing, kind of the approach that he's taking and his outlook and because of that he's just a really compelling villain which is a really great accomplishment especially within the whole Marvel and comic book world where villains don't quite get it <laughs> but Michael B. Jordan really cuts through with that and you, you really really understand why he's doing what he's doing. And if you watch Michael B. Jordan's interviews for Killmonger's character, he talks about the relationship being very similar to that in the X-Men between Charles Xavier and Magneto's character, where they just, you know, they could be friends, they could be kind of on the same page and have an allegiance slash alliance with one another, but they're just coming at, you know, the situation from complete opposite sides that naturally they're going to go into conflict with one another. So also it's really really nice to kind of see Michael B. Jordan in a successful comic book movie compared to the disastrous Fantastic Four movie. So I'm really really happy for him that he was actually getting the opportunity to be in a 
really successful franchise. The visuals in this movie are just top quality. Like I said before, you know, the world of Wakanda looks absolutely incredible. You get to particularly see it at like a sunrise, sunset level. And just the world that they've created just absolutely looks incredibly epic. The technology, you know, Vibranium is able to create absolutely awesome tech. And you get to see that, you know, the Black Panther suit is made of Vibranium and just the power that that can control is just really, really cool. Um, and just the fight sequences as well absolutely elevated all the different fight sequences that you've seen in other Marvel movies before. There's, there's like proper battle sequences. It also does have the classic, you know, the Marvel necessities such as like a car chase sequence and kind of those, those staples. But yeah, it kind of all makes a visual masterpiece in the Black Panther movie. So comparatively to other solo Marvel hero movies, this is definitely one of the better ones. Black Panthers, you know, you could compare it to Iron Man and Captain America, which are also character-driven solo movies. And I would say, you know, Black Panther's a lot better than they are, because it kind of, it's not just one character. Black Panther's obviously at the core of the movie, but it's also the whole world of Wakanda, the Wakandans, and kind of like the conflict between the hero and the villain was just really, really well told. And obviously, you know, Marvel's in phase three now, so they really know what they're doing with kind of creating a recipe for um, a successful solo outing. So, you know, comparatively to other Marvel movies, this is definitely one of the better ones. Overall, I really enjoyed the Black Panther movie. I really like the storytelling, I really like the character-driven narrative, and in particular, I really liked how you can really understand the motivations behind the different characters, and you can really understand why they're doing what they're doing. And more than that, I'm really pleased to see the progression and the cultural diversity that this film represents. And I'm really happy with Marvel that they actually are able to put a movie like this out there and that it was absolutely so successful, which is just definitely the way that it should be. And for all of those reasons, I have to give this movie a 7.5 out of 10. I'd love to hear what you think, so please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.